They're known as the people of the fire, the Jinn. But how did one of them end up driving a taxi cab in New York? Mm. And what impact will his appearance have? Mm. Hello again, I'm your host, Mark Snedeker of Entertainment Weekly, once again joined by Orlando Jones, who brings Mr. Nancy to life. We will be discussing episode three of American Gods, Head Full of Snow. But before we dive in, we're about to go inside the latest episode, so if you haven't seen it, go do something else. Mm -hmm. This is your official spoiler alert. The following program. Modern style. You've been warned, but if you're still here, here to talk it all over with us are Omid Abtahi, who plays friendly salesman Salim, and Musa Kresh, who plays the mysterious Jin, as well as special guest executive producer Brian Fuller. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so what did it feel like, first off, for you guys to finally see this episode come to life? Because it's such a special episode, episode three, um, and you must have been working on it for well over a year, I think, Brian, right? Yeah, it, it was originally episodes three and four, very early on in the uh, process before we actually started filming. We realized that we had a nine episode arc that needed to be a 10 episode arc. So we split two and three into two, three, and four, and then didn't like what we had, and then we reduced it back to two and three. So <laughs> cool. there is an entire lost episode of the, uh, the spare parts of, of two or three and four that is out there that hopefully no one will ever see. <laughs> <laughs> and now, what were, you, uh, what were you looking for in the auditions? Did you guys screen test together uh, eventually? No. no. <laughs> oh, wow, all right. So first meet well, you did say yeah. that yeah. as if it would have changed the situation. <laughs> like, no. no. <laughs> so what was, uh, what was your first meeting like? Do you guys remember? Well, yeah. Yeah, you want to go ahead. I was gonna. Well, we've known each you other were cast for first, I think. ten years. So oh yeah. wow! I went in for Salim. I went in for his role. Huh? And I kept going back for his role. And then one day they were like, "Would you mind reading this?" And I was like, "I have not prepared this. I have no idea what's going on." They're just like, they're "Just give it a shot." And we just did it on the spot. And then a few weeks later, I get a phone call. And they're like, "They want you for that role." And I was just like, "For Salim?" And they're like, "No, no, no, the Jin." I was like. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm totally down for that. So totally. Let's let's go. Completely caught you off surprise. Totally, you completely off surprise. I honestly was preparing for Sleem, had Sleem on my mind. I was going through the motions, right. just like well, really so preparing. And, and so did you. <laughs> and That's then, why. And, 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 and then the best part was after I got the role, it, it was a few, it was maybe a few months, and I kept asking like Brian and other people. I was like, who, so who's who's Salim? Like, right. just kind of give me a heads up. And they're like, we're you know, we can't say it yet. Well, we have somebody in mind, and then you call me up. You and yeah. yeah you well, call. I saw the press release for you. Okay, <laughs> and then he and so and and I, when he called me, I was just like, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. somebody That's I amazing. know. And it right. just it, we've we're, already we're such a small like our community of Middle Eastern actors is so small. So the likelihood of you knowing yeah the person you're going to work with is hmm. was probably like eighty yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure right. enough. Honestly, couldn't work with anybody better. So, oh. yeah. Likewise, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Omid, what was your first scene uh, that you shot? Was it Salim waiting for, uh, waiting, smiling? It was, yeah, yeah. It was in the office, uh, and and God, that scene came together so well. And it's probably one of my favorite scenes yeah. so far. Yeah, it's a wonderful. It's scene. so quirky. Yeah. Why are you smiling? A salesman is naked in America without a smile. What's yeah. uh, what's the art of faking a smile? <laughs> All you gotta do it. Pretend you're talking. Yeah. You're talking through your teeth, you know. Yeah, and I just funny. realized now why I didn't get the part because I can't fake a smile. Like <laughs> yeah, I can't fake smiles. That's you know, kind of a like, good this thing. This is it. But you can it's fake. Like, you can fake fire eyes. I could totally I feel like fake. Did you fake eyes. your orgasm? Oh hell no! That was all original. <laughs> that was real, dude. That's right. I walked right in there and I was like, again? Come on, let's. Do it. Right. <laughs> so I mean, on that note, let's let's dive into that scene. That is such a uh, powerful scene. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about uh, the day on set. Was it a one day shoot or was it uh, spread out? We shot it a couple. Of <laughs> <times>. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. No, it wasn't a one day shoot. Uh, the, it was interesting seeing the the first round of dailies. And as a gay man, uh, I was looking at their positions and saying, I think my, <laughs> my exact words were, unless Musa has a 12-inch candy cane that can around corners, his dick is not getting in his 
that position. <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank you. Yes, that's how I felt. But I luckily enough, I do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. So, <laughs> but we want, you know, it's it's very limited. It's a limited edition. It's such a beautiful scene. It seems a shame to sort of talk about the <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the basics of of making it. But it, one of my favorite stories is our visual effects guy. For some reason, even though we hadn't said this number, or maybe said it as a joke, he got into his head that your penis must be an 11 inch penis. And so, I sent you a still. Mm -hmm. In motion, yeah. it was giggle inducing, right. because it, was, <laughs> it, it had its a sense of gravity yeah, to it. it. Mm -hmm. And like uh, it was lording yeah. around the I, It was literally, when I, I mean, I, I, I saw it, and I, I, first, I, first I was like, whoa. And then I, I was, just me, because I'm so open, I was showing it to friends. I was like, what do you think? And they were like, they were like why is it pink? And I was like, oh, I think there's fire in it. I see, like, I'm, I'm not sure, but is, is, does it work? Like, what? And they were just going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I was expecting you to s respond like, Jesus Christ, or something, because it was it was impressive. But your response was, uh, looks good, it should be browner. It oh, should yeah, be more that's brown. That's right, that's right. Because of the, I was like, it was like, I was like, <laughs> he's like, let me Thank see. you for yeah. protecting the myth. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Thank you for protecting I was just you. like, yeah, it's like, yeah, the color's a little off. But then, but then after the fact, that's when I was just like, maybe there's fire in it. Something's going on there, but they know what they're doing. Totally. <laughs> well, what, what was it like for you? Uh, so, I mean, you know, this is not my first uh, gay sex scene. Um, so, I am a veteran of this genre, but uh, it was—it it was, you know, it's for me. It was—it was better. It's, it made it a little bit easier knowing, having known Musa. We've mm -hmm. known each other for ten years. Sure. And you know, when we first shot it, you know, when you're an actor, you get this kind of roles. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna get in shape and da 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 da. Mm -hmm. And so we had shot that, we shot the scene, and then I think it was like two months later, yeah. and I was mid chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> and when I got Brian's email, they're like, we need to shoot this again, and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, you didn't so, get to finish that coffee. Hollywood tickle. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm gonna get a different saline. It, but, you know, both times it, it felt great, and then watching the final product, it just, it's so... It's beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you shoot these scenes, you're like, oh, I don't know if this feels kind of raunchy or not, but it's mm -hmm. just, it's so touching and so beautiful, and with the special effects and the music, it just, I don't know, I, my hat's off to you. You're my well, favorite the, ship. Yes. The thing I'm shipping mm. for this, no. for, for American Gods. Yeah. Is there a name? What is it? Is it? I, we have to figure Sa out. Sajim? Sajim so like, or? Sajim? Jalene? Jalene. We'll need you to uh, take care of that. Uh, Jalene, I'm shipping Jalene heavy because I really think, you know, it, what I love about the scene is it, it's, it feels, there's such love and tenderness and compassion and also um, desire mm -hmm. for, for one another and just the way you ultimately come together. I cannot wait to see how this relationship moves forward. I know that's, that's that cannot be a one night stand. I hope it is not. Do you know where it's going? Do you have desires about where it's going? <laughs> Please, I wanna hear more. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we, we want it to be a genuine relationship that the audience and the characters are invested in and we were, so inspired by Musa and Omid in their performances that we just started spinning more stories for them for, for season two because we, when you have those tools in your toolbox, not that you're tools, <laughs> but uh, if you're inspired by actors in your, in your ensemble, you wanna make sure that you dig out more room for them. Mm -hmm. And absolutely with these two, we want, to, we want mm -hmm. everybody to root for Salim and the Jinn. Yeah. Yeah. The, mo the moment for me is, is, is the elevator. Yeah, it's when you're sure. riding the elevator, and it's it's the it's how careful mm -hmm. um, of the and fearful the rejection could be, how it could all, mm -hmm. and that the, the when the hands ultimately come together, you you really do feel like it's yeah. it's it's culminated to something. A sigh of relief. Yes, yeah, a sigh yeah. because you 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 want it at that point. Even the getting out of the car and the asking. You know, all of the little elements of it are so beautifully placed and wonderfully played. I was like, yeah, I'm in love with these dudes. Yeah. I'm like, straight guys in love <laughs> with these two guys. <laughs> Don't care. Don't care. Totally. <laughs> Fully in. But it's it's really beautifully done. Uh, I mean, thank you. Thank, thank, yeah, Bravo, thank you. Bravo, Bravo. Thank you. They know nothing about my people here. 
You think all we do is grant wishes? If I could grant a wish, do you think I would be driving a cab? Salim asks, are there many jinn in New York? Yeah. Which suggests that there are, because we don't know his, his name necessarily, um, right? I mean, unless mm -hmm. it's, you know, Peter. But <laughs> it's uh, Bob. Peter. Bob the Jinn. But, um, you know, it's, it's interesting that, you know, Mr. Wednesday is singular and Mr. Nancy is singular. Um, what does it mean, maybe, that there are other jinn in New York, that he's one of just a few? Wow, I don't even know. I, I think there's, you know, the story of the jinn is, is one of the things that I grew up with. You know, mm -hmm. my, my mom would tell me these stories. And they, they, going back to what you were talking about of how in, in the end of your scene, you just believe. Culturally, it feels like Middle Eastern people believe in these things. Like if you, was gonna, if you were to see a jinn, mm -hmm. you'd just accept it because we know these stories. And I think with the jinn and the rarity of these jinns, I, th I would love to know, and I guess you, you could talk better about this, or I guess Neil can, of like where, what happened to them? You know, because jinns are pre-Islamic. They mm -hmm. were worshipped before Islam, like hundreds of years prior to like the Quran came out. Mm -hmm. They're pre-Islamic deities. They were worshipped at one point. And then, you know, Islam came around and they're talked about in, in the Quran but not to the same specificity as, as how, archae, you know, in Aramaic scripture. Mm -hmm. um, so that I, there's, a, there's this huge mystery of who are they, where are they, and why are they here, you know, and who, who worships them now, and, you know, Salim does, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's keeping me alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's keeping you alive. Was it any accident that this episode's uh, Somewhere in America was about a Muslim woman with uh, Egyptian roots and she, she meets Anubis? Uh, it was an accident, actually, mm. uh, because the, uh, the Mrs. Fadil story that opens the episode was originally the opening of the series. Wow. And, you know, Michael and I went back and forth quite a bit because everybody saw the, the Vikings and said that that is a much clearer expression of the war that Odin is trying to instigate than Mrs. Fadil. And our concerns as uh, sensitive gentlemen were, it's so uh, male in its storytelling that we wanted this show to be for everybody, which is why we wanted Mrs. Fadil's story to open up, but we saw the point. We saw what uh, the network was saying about that being a more cohesive opening for the series. So we slid uh, that back to episode three, and for us, the book ending of it was uh, meeting a woman who was struggling with death, and then ending with Laura Moon on the, the, uh, the bed who's also struggling with her death. And it wasn't until watching the episode and after the election and hearing her say, this is a Muslim home, and then all of a sudden that's a buzzy word, and going, oh, that worked out, you know, <laughs> right. because we are introducing this, uh, this, this Muslim character. And it felt like it was a happy accident that it all worked out that way. Um, well, guys, thank you so much uh, for joining <laughs> us oh, to talk about this. Thank you. Th thank you for making yeah. brown people look so great. <laughs> thank you for being part of the yes, show. Yes, and just speaking the truth when it comes to size. <laughs> 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 on that note, so that's a wrap on another episode. Both myself and Mark would like to thank Omid, Musa, and Brian Fuller for being here. We invite you to join us again next week. We'll be looking at episode four. Get gone with some very special guests. So we'll see you next time. Get gone.